Hello friends, inorganic chemistry derivative plays an important role in the identification of organic compound. In some example, the preparation of derivative is taken as a confirmatory test for the organic compound. So in this video, we will see the various derivatives and how they are prepared. The preparation of derivative is a very much simple one. So let's start with the first derivative in which we will see the preparation of oxalate derivative of urea. The reaction for this derivative is urea plus oxalic acid. It gives a complex. So nothing is eliminated. Just there is an addition. Two molecules of the urea combined with the one molecule of oxalic acid. So that we get oxalate urea complex in the preparation of oxalate derivative of urea first of all the saturated solution of oxalic acid as well as urea is prepared either in a test tube or in a beaker so first of all we have to add a small amount of water in a test tube and small amount of water in a beaker then Oxalic acid as well as urea is gradually added in the test tube or in a beaker here. Then we get here a saturated solution of oxalic acid in a test tube and here we get a saturated solution of urea in a beaker. Then about 3 ml saturated solution of urea and 3 ml saturated solution of oxalic acid they are mixed together in another beaker and this beaker is stirred with the glass rod and after the stirring in a few minutes we get a white colored precipitate so i will write here white ppt it is nothing but the complex of urea and oxalate this is called as a oxalate derivative of urea then it is filtered and it is washed with the water then it is recrystallized from the alcohol and its MP is taken. Suppose the MP of this oxalate derivative that we have got, it is 175 and it is returned in the degree Celsius and finally we have to convert it into the degree Kelvin. So this is the result. Just we have to take the MP of oxalate derivative of urea. Similarly, we can prepare a nitrate derivative of urea in the nitrate derivative, we have to replace the oxalic acid by concentrated HNO3 that is nitric acid. So let's see the nitrate derivative of urea. The aim of this derivative is the preparation of a nitrate derivative of urea. It involves the same procedure which we have seen in the oxalate derivative of urea. The reaction is simple one just urea is added with the nitric acid so urea plus nitric acid it gives the urea nitrate complex in the procedure we have to take about a 6 ml or 6 cm cube concentrated nitric acid in a test tube and we have to prepare a saturated solution of urea so in this beaker we have prepared the saturated solution of urea now the nitric acid which is taken in the test tube is uh, added into the saturated solution of urea and after the addition of nitric acid the beaker is cooled under tap water because it is a exothermic reaction and in a few minutes we get a white PPT which is nothing but the urea nitrate. In this way we can prepare a nitrate derivative of urea. Now this white PPT is filtered off then it is dried and recrystallized from the ethanol and we have to take the melting point of this nitrate derivative. So the result is the melting point of nitrate derivative. Suppose it is around 163 degrees Celsius and in a Kelvin it is 436 Kelvin. In this way 
we will prepare a nitrate derivative of urea. Now we will see the next derivative that is iodoform derivative of acetone. The aim of iodoform derivative is the preparation of iodoform derivative from acetone. The iodoform derivatives they are prepared generally from the compound which are having uh, CH3 C double bond O functionality. This type of compounds they shows a iodoform test which is characteristic of a ketone as well as uh, esters. Now the reaction for this uh, preparation is the acetone is treated with the iodine solution in presence of sodium carbonate it will form a iodoform and the remaining will be the sodium iodide, hypoiodide and carboxylate ion along with the carbon dioxide and water. Here it is clear that this acetone is converted into the CHI3. In this way a compound which are having this type of group they are identified by the iodoform. Now the procedure of iodoform derivative is we have to take a 5 ml of acetone into the conical flask or beaker whatever it may be a 5 ml acetone is taken then to that a 5 ml 10 percent sodium carbonate that is NaCO3 solution is added to this conical flask and a 10 percent I2 solution that is iodine solution is added in this conical flask till there is a development of yellow color. Therefore, the condition is that we have to add 10 percent iodine solution till yellow color appears in the conical flask. After the formation of yellow color, we have to warm this conical flask along with the content on the water bath. It is just warm. Then after warming, we get a yellow crystals or yellow solid which is separated into the conical flask. So that here there is a formation of yellow iodoform derivative of acetone. Now this solid it is filtered then it is washed with the water and recrystallized from the spirit or ethanol that is alcohol and we have to take the melting point of this iodoform derivative. So in the result we have to write the melting point of iodoform derivative and it is around 1 to 0 degree Celsius. It is the melting point that we have taken. Now we will see the osazone derivative of a carbohydrate and a carbohydrate is taken in that derivative is a glucose. In the fourth derivative we will see the preparation of a osazone derivative of carbohydrate. The carbohydrates are identified by the osazone derivative and in this preparation we will see the osazone derivative of glucose. The reaction for this osazone derivative a glucose is reacted with the phenyl hydrazine. This is the glucose and it is a phenyl hydrazine. Then we get uh, there is a formation of carbon double bond nitrogen. Then a second molecule of phenyl hydrazine also reacts with the intermediate and it will form a osazone derivative of glucose that is called as a glucosazone. Here there is a formation of another carbon double bond nitrogen. So the two molecules of phenyl hydrazine they reacts with the glucose to form osazone. And in the preparation we have to use a glucose as well as phenyl hydrazine and acetic acid along with the water. So first of all a uh, 2 gram of glucose is taken in a 10 ml water in a beaker. So in this beaker there is a 10 ml water and to which a 2 gram glucose is added and the solution is prepared. Then in another beaker a 4 ml phenyl hydrazine. It is a liquid. 
it is taken into the beaker to that a 4 ml uh, acetic acid that is a glacial acetic acid is added and a 10 ml water is added so in both beaker there is a presence of 10 ml water in one beaker a uh, 2 gram is added it is of glucose and in another beaker 4 ml phenyl hydrazine and 4 ml glacial acetic acid is added now the first solution is added to the second solution where phenyl hydrazine is present now the total solution is heated on a water bath for a 45 minute and after the heating it is removed from the water bath and it is cooled in a ice cold water and after cooling we get a yellow crystals of a glucose as well. here we get a yellow crystals in this way first of all we have to prepare the solution of glucose and solution of phenyl hydrazine then we have to add them together and heat the content on the water bath for 45 minutes after the heating ice cold water is used for the cooling purpose and we get a yellow crystals of osazone derivative of glucose now this yellow crystal they are filtered then washed with the alcohol and they are recrystallized from the methylated spirit then we have to take the melting point of this yellow crystal now the melting point of the glucose derivative that is osazone derivative of the glucose is 205 degree celsius it is the melting point that we have taken and in a kelvin it is 478 kelvin so in this way we can uh, prepare a osazone derivative of carbohydrate which will indicate the presence of carbohydrate in an organic compound now the last derivative which is the picrate derivative of either phenol or a neutral in which we will see the picrate derivative of alpha naphthol picrate derivative of beta naphthol and picrate derivative of naphthalene in the last derivative we will see the preparation of a picrate derivative of phenol and neutral here phenol that is alpha naphthol or a beta naphthol and neutral is nothing but the naphthalene the picric derivative involves the reaction of picric acid and a phenol or a neutral here first reaction it is alpha or beta naphthol just we have written here the formula C10S7OH it reacts with the picric acid and it gives a corresponding naphthol picrate if it is alpha then alpha naphthol picrate is obtained and if it is beta then here we get the beta naphthol picrate and in the second reaction a naphthalene also react with the picric acid to gives naphthalene picrate now the picrate derivative is formed by the charge transfer complex i will write here the reaction of naphthalene and picric acid how the charge complex is formed for that purpose i have to write first uh, naphthalene one ring is aromatic and i will kept another ring as it is then it reacts with the picric acid the structure of picric acid is it is an aromatic ring no doubt but i will leave that uh, double bond in the ring and just i will write a cyclic ring so it is a trinitrophenol and when they react with each other the charge is transferred from this ring to this ring these are the aromatic rings i haven't write their pi bonds now after the charge transfer we get the naphthalene picrate and the structure of naphthalene picrate is like this so the charge is transferred from this ring to this ring so the electron which are present in this aromatic ring they are transferred from this ring to this ring and here a delta positive charge is created whereas 
here a delta negative charge is created in this way there is a charge transfer of naphthalene to the picric acid and we get a naphthalene picrate derivative similarly alpha naphthol and beta naphthol also undergoes the reaction now we will see the procedure of this picrate derivative uh, for that purpose we will take a beta naphthol here this is the beta naphthol now the saturated solution of beta naphthol is prepared in a benzene in this test tube we have to add a benzene as a solvent and to that beta naphthol is added and we get here a saturated solution now to the saturated solution of beta naphthol in a benzene a saturated solution of a picric acid a picric acid in a benzene is also added so in this bottle there is a picric acid in benzene this solution is added to this solution and when it is added we get a picrate derivative but in case of beta naphthol and alpha naphthol before mixing this solution with the saturated solution of phenol we have to warm this test tube on a water bath we have to warm this test tube on a water bath because if you directly warm this test tube then there is a explosion because benzene is catching the fire that's why we have to warm this test tube on a water bath then we have to add the picric acid in benzene in this test tube and after the addition we get a picrate derivative which is uh, formed in the test tube after the seeking the test tube then it is poured on the clean and dry watch glass so the content in the test tube is poured on the watch glass here we get uh, orange colored crystals of a picrate derivative of beta naphthol as well as alpha naphthol as well as a naphthalene and when benzene is evaporated then we will take the melting point of the derivative so this is a simple procedure but we have to keep in mind in case of phenol that is alpha and beta the saturated solution of the phenol we have to warm on the water bath then a picric acid in benzene we have to add and after the addition the test tube is shake and after the shaking the content is poured on the watch glass so that we get here a clear crystals of picrate derivative of phenol and a neutral now the result of this preparation here the results of picrate derivative are already written just we have to take the melting point of various picrate derivative alpha naphthol it is having a melting point around 188 degrees celsius that is 461 kelvin picrate derivative of beta naphthol 156 degrees celsius 4 to 9 kelvin or in case of picrate derivative of naphthalene we get the melting point around 150 degrees celsius and in a kelvin it is 4 to 3 kelvin in all the derivative we have to take only the melting point of the derivatives